Thank you, everyone who is joining us. I know it's been a it's a very late start for us. Unfortunately, we're having immense levels of technical difficulties, and just when we thought everything was going well, now my recording software is not picking me up and is refusing to acknowledge my mic. So I'm gonna have to get that fixed later. I am, as always, Rode, the immensely frustrated, but here I am anyway, and this is Torcast Hard Mode. Not the regular one, we skipped last week because we were doing our Extra Life thing, and I wasn't going to get two hours of sleep and then get back up and do a podcast. Wasn't gonna happen. So, joining me today, we have May. Hi, May. I know. Hi, Rode. Yeah. How are you? <laughs> I'm frustrated as all hell, but you know what? We're gonna do it anyway. Do it live! And joining us is Cynic, which oddly suits how I'm feeling right now. Yeah, okay. Hi there, guys. <laughs> uh, Cynic, tell us a little bit about yourself and why you're here. Uh, hi there, guys. I'm Cynic. I'm playing a mech healer in Reckoning of the Red Eclipse, and I'm here to talk about uh, healing, like the mech class and healing in general. Fantastic. And uh, with that, you can probably tell that we are talking about healing today. Which, I guess, kind of suits the episode name, considering it's Medic! And I'm going to need one before the show is over. So, that's fantastic. Anyway, so, uh, let's go ahead. Right, what have you guys been doing the last couple weeks? Or, you know, what have, what's been going on in general, recently? Well, I'm on vacation right now, so that's kind of exciting. I drove in the car for seven hours yesterday, but... It's nice. And playing Star Wars, it's been... I got a bunch of gear this week, so that's really nice. And then school. The boring stuff. Yeah, pretty much the same. Like school, uni projects, uh, you know, homework, and pretty much playing Star Wars. Homework in between Q-pops. That's how I do it. Yeah. <laughs> nice. <laughs> that's actually not a bad idea. Make functional use there. of your time instead of doing what I do between cues and stare there angry that the queue still hasn't popped. Run around in that like corridor in the PvP wing and jump yeah, in all the dark yeah, spots. I, I, pretty much. Yeah. Every now and then I fling myself over the side, you know, go for the typical Star Wars style pit and just drop myself into infinity. Yeah, that's kind of how it goes for me. That's how you get to your bank to... faster, your cargo hold faster. That's actually partially true. Although <laughs> I've been spending a lot of time in the VIP lounge recently. Just sit up there all Why? day because it has because it, it has everything I need up there. I've got mm. the GTN and I got my bank and that's pretty much it. That and a mailbox. Yeah. yeah. It's really quiet as well. Like not really that many people up there. I have I've never seen more than five people up there. Yeah. So yeah. But anyway. I'm actually right there at the moment. What's that? I'm, right, I'm actually right there at the moment, as we oh, speak. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Very nice. But anyway, uh, well, here we are. Let's go ahead and get into our contact information and get this show going. We're running a little short on time, so we're going to tread through things, get a little caught up since we didn't do last week's show, and here we go. If you'd like to get a hold of us, you can do so by going to torcast.com to read and comment, hate and subscribe on iTunes, torcast.com slash feed if you use iTunes. Email us at torcast at torcast.com or me, road at torcast.com, at torcast on the Twitter. We are a part of the Twan Camera family of podcasts at twancamera.com. You can check out their YouTube at youtube.com slash twancamera ENT, which is where you will also find this video uh, or the result of the stream once I get it cut, edited, and put on there. Unless, of course, YouTube gives me issues, which it's been doing recently. And if you'd like to help out the website, because this isn't free for us to do, you can do so by going to twoncamera.com slash audible to get your free 30-day trial. Uh, if you are not sure what kind of book to get, I would suggest getting John Dies at the End. Fantastic novel. Also, a lot of expletives, but that's not the point. And going into our news so we can get things caught up, there was a SOTOR costume contest which has come and gone... No, there were no rat ghouls. No, there were no fun events. And yes, I was immensely disappointed. Well, I mean, that, how were you? Obviously, everyone was disappointed. They put a patch right before Halloween, and you thought that they were going to do something Halloween-y. Because rat ghouls are pretty terrifying. Yeah, they are. And they, I mean, they didn't do anything. It was kind of a big letdown, especially, like, not to have the whole WoW comparison, but it's not, it was fun on WoW when you had your holiday events that happened. Yeah. He gave you a reason to do some stupid daily. Yeah. 
even at this point, the best event they've had so far was the Rat Ghoul event. And, you know, bringing that, not even bringing it back as original, but even if they brought back the original event, I'd be happy with that. Because I would yeah, love some... to do that again. Orange and black sparkle powder, I feel like that couldn't have been that hard to program. <laughs> right. <laughs> but, unfortunately, we were less left disappointed and, well, you know, crap happens, I guess. Hopefully the they'll... Contest. Uh, well, they were having some kind con- They they put it through their different forms of social media about, you know, taking a picture of your character in some kind of fun costume, you know, some way you've tossed different gear pieces together with different die sets. I, I guess that's really what they were going for, and just do something fun. Um, they were accepting submissions until, I believe, November 3rd, but really, most people are probably going to look roughly the same anyway, so... The best hey, one I saw, one. and it was on Twitter, and it was the, it was from at Swetor Family... It was somebody did a Miley Cyrus one, so they had like a nude bodysuit. Oh on, like, yeah, on yeah, there, yeah. Their tongue sticking out. That was really good. I liked oh, that, one. that was that was amazing. That was a it, good one. It, it was yeah. amazing. I was very <laughs> upset about the fact that that was possible, but yeah, it was amazing. No, it's better. <laughs> yeah. Some things just don't need to exist, let alone in Star Wars, and that's <laughs> that's definitely one of them. But anyway, moving away from that, uh, we've got two Cantina events coming in the near future. One on November 13th, which will be in the uh, San Fran area. And the next will be in Austin, Texas on the 22nd, which hopefully Russell will be able to attend. His nerd card depends on it. Or did he His get nerd card already? does depend on it. It does, yeah. But I He's don't know what's, the, uh, what's going on with that. I mean, he lives in Austin, so he should be able to attend. So if you're going to be able to attend, look for some nerd that looks like he might be part of a podcast and smack him in the back of the head. He'll love me for saying that one. Yeah. He doesn't right. look that nerdy. He does! <laughs> he does look the role of a nerd. If I weren't so pale all the time, I would, I'd look the part too. So, you know, I can't really talk. Outside's bad. There's, there's no video games out there. We act... We do have some good, I'm reading chat right now, we have some really good on our server, some good, um, like, character people. Like, there's a Ronald McDonald one, <laughs> and then there's there's a Hulk one. He literally has on purple shorts, and he's, like, a green mirror Loki or whatever. And he, oh, that's cool, and yeah. The Hulk, and he looks like the Hulk. It's really good. Did he go with uh, body type three? Uh, yeah. He's a big, fat Hulk. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Very nice. In sync, no, let's not go there. Poison oh, Ivy. there is there's oh, an cool. insane band <sighs> on the Bastion. They have all the characters. <laughs> that's let's leave the '90s where they should be, <laughs> buried and forgotten. Um. Yeah. Anyway, so moving on, we have a little dev blog about the season season one PvP coming up. Since it has been pushed back, I guess it's nice to have something to read about it. Doesn't really do anything for me though because I'm not a big like ranked pvp or but what about you may i know you're huge into pvp i mean it doesn't change anything i don't think that anyone ever thought that exactly what happened wasn't going to happen um, well i was i was expecting you to be pushed back too but i yeah, mean all good things you must wait for it doesn't i couldn't say for other servers i don't know there's i would say that there's more teams queuing right now on our server than um a few weeks ago and i think that's just because everyone has had time to get gear and maybe like find people that they want to play with, but there still isn't anything set up, and they still have no actual. I don't know, there's just a really big disconnect. I feel like between the devs and the PVPers, and it's almost to that point where there's no going back. Like there's nothing more that either side can do, and it just it's bleeding. Nobody wants to PVP. There's a lot of PVPers that have left PVP and are starting to PVE. Yeah, I mean, I've got uh, some of my old guildies uh, from my previous guild that, you know, had all left the game. When Arenas came back in, they started playing again, they made new characters on a new server, and that's pretty much all they do is, you know, coordinate times to come on and PvP together, and otherwise don't touch the game. Mm -hmm. But And I haven't really talked to them about how they feel about Ranked coming up, but being as there's only four of them right now, I don't think that's really going to, or the Season 1, I don't think it's really going to affect them all that much. And there's no, I mean, it's the same things we've been saying about PvP as far as, like, ranking. Um, there's no actual way, way to rank everybody, like, across the board because there's no cross-server 
cues and then there's always going to be there's going to be an inflation of rankings because if there is no i don't know tiers there's no like tiered system in place so that people of the same rating are playing each other and people just can just farm points off lower teams with lower gear and yeah with if there's more teams that's the case like if you're on a server with a very few good teams you're never going to have the same rating as someone who has 50 teams to play and 40 of them are bad so i mean i still don't even see a a point to do seasons if there's not going to be any cross server queuing i mean yeah, you're exactly. not going to be able to pit yourself against the best teams if the best teams are one team per server yeah. So there's not going to be that real season. sense of... Yeah. And I mean, even if the EU and, you know, the American servers are separated, and then maybe, you know, for end of the season, they pit the best teams from each region against each other in some kind of big thing. Like, you know, Battlefield 4 just did the same thing. You know, they put a bunch of teams from different parts of the world against each other for, you know, the big world finale. But until they yeah. have some system like that put in, I don't even see a point two having season game or season ranks. That'd be interesting. Yeah. Like, I mean, you're probably going to do it. Like all you're going to gain from it is probably going to be like another mount or something or like a title. Uh, but by now I think the damage has been done and like most of the PVPs uh, have left the game and there was this, they might like come back when the uh, season one um, goes live. But then again, like, I don't think that there's like that many people that do play and per server if it's it's going to be like tops five to like i don't know like eight teams and that's like uh, there's really no point to to this moment to like release season one i mean there's not going to be any competition you know who's good and who's bad and this is not going to make any difference right i don't know i guess we're gonna, gonna have to sit and wait and, you know and see how everything turns out once it is actually live and put in place but I guess, coming from my standpoint, it's really not going to affect me either which way, so it doesn't really matter to me as a whole. It's just kind of the outsider looking in situation, I guess, for now. Yeah. For now. Yeah, yeah. You're right. Well, All right, it doesn't matter your... for the PPPs either. PPPers either. <laughs> <laughs> right. Just put it on the PTS, let the people just battle it out there. Done. Or maybe just have yep. a whole new server. Transfer your PvP characters to that server and, you know, put in the same rankings as the PTS have it access or accessible for tournaments stuff like that i still wish they yeah. have some kind of system put in where we could you know match guilds against each other and you know do organized pvp on our own but yeah there you go yeah it would be great to have like an arena season once a year to, like everyone from pretty much both regions could like join and uh, try to like you know get first and beat the other teams uh, yeah. but i guess that requires a lot of uh, you know uh, work for Bioware to like create the server. I mean, they pretty much have have it already. Like what what's happening on the PTS, but then exactly. again, um, they might haven't really thought of it. And I guess that's I don't know the issue at the moment. Right. Exactly. All right. Let's go into our last news bit, and then we'll uh, get on to our main discussion topic for the show. Uh, cartel coins are now purchasable via the in-game store. For subscribers until November 30th, you will get 50% off your first in-game purchase through the Cartel Market. Uh, this does not work if you try to work, buy stuff through the website. And I've been seeing some tweets online and uh, some messages in the forum saying that the you know purchase or the 50% off is not working as intended. Uh, I don't. I have not tried because I'm not putting any more money in this than I have to. But does that have mean either of you? Hmm? No, but does that mean not working in the is and you don't get your 50% off, or is it? Yeah, that's what uh, it gives I've been you reading. lots of nice stuff. Well, I've been reading that uh, people have not been getting the 50% off discount. Hmm. That they've, you know, they've actually put money toward it and have ended up paying full price. But I don't know. And apparently, you get a, a treat Ewok companion, and or you can buy all that good stuff. And I don't know. It's more cartel coin stuff, and that's where I just kind of just run off. So, there's that. It's, it's fun, just though. easier to spend your money now. Exactly. Please make it easier it's to making... give them more money. It's making it more convenient for you to blow your entire paycheck. And it accepts all major credit cards, so there you go. 
<laughs> yeah, needless to say, I'm not exactly impressed, but that's just because I'm a cynical bastard. There we go. I'll try it next week. I usually buy myself, like, one cartel thing a month. That's my happy, I don't know. I always I'll... want something. I always want some, like, legacy unlock that's... Yeah, those are convenient. I'll probably, convenient. you know, j by the end of the month, I'll probably end up exploiting that 50% off deal myself. Mm -hmm. But, yeah. I'm also done transferring all my characters now, so all my cartel coins will start going into other stuff. That's true. That might be a good idea, too, just to get it now in case I ever want to transfer at some point and save it, because it would be... I would yeah, have those coins saved up, idea. yeah. Maybe half as expensive, half as, yeah, half as expensive. Hooray! Exactly. <laughs> you can do right. two characters. <laughs> exactly. All right, so going into our meat and potatoes of this show, okay. uh, we are going to talk about healing and everything that I don't goes know, I into I thought that. that was enthusiastic enough for it. I know. Fine. <laughs> the meat and potatoes! <laughs> and that's the most go. you're going to get out of me. That's the best. Yeah. So we're going to talk about healing and the different, you know, we're going to get into a little bit of the gear that goes along with that. Unfortunately, we were going to have one person for each of the, and there's Gudars in chat. Well, he doesn't have an operative. He actually oh. can't. Oh, so he can't contribute to that at all? Okay. All right, no. so I'll go back to what I was saying. So we were going to have one person for each of the different classes to represent each of the healing types. But as whoever was supposed to come on for our operative side has not turned up, May is going to try to break it down as best she can. So I'm going to go ahead and let you start this off, May, because at, when it comes to healing, I am definitely the <laughs> novice in it. And the most experience I've had doing it is leveling my commando healer to 50 and then never playing him again. So Maybe that's anyway. because no one plays commando healers. <laughs> exactly. That's pretty much uh. why. He looks cool, though. I like it. Hey. So I do play all he all three healing classes. I both my operative and my Sork are I PvE and PvP with both of them. I PvP more on my operative than PvE. Um, and I PvE more on my Sork than I PvP with it. But I do have I did heal for quite a while on my Merc. Um, at fifty, it's fifty four right now. But it is a very underrepresented class. There are very few Merc healers. Um, I would say of the Merc healers that there are, there are even less very good Merc healers. Yeah, that's uh, actually quite true. I brought one of them on. It's hard to find good Merc healers, it really, really is. And we know Sinek, we played with him on the PTS. Yeah. Actually, so, I mean, people need to understand the mechanics and all of that, but we're going to go through that in a sec, I guess. Mm -hmm. Well, no, you can do it now. Start now. Um, as far as gearing is concerned, for what would you say the best like gearing? Right. Well, I mean, um, I've been reading on the forums like people have different opinions about it. Like some people like to go um, all out on power and alacrity and go for like zero critical, and then some other people want to go for more crit. Uh, I'm somewhere in between. Like I think we should have. Um, I mean, the, the stat priority would be like uh, aim, which is our main stat, and then go for power. Uh, 73 to like 75 percent surge, and then you need about 28 to 30 percent crit, which is like about 131 alacrit. Uh, I mean critical rating, uh, with best in slot 78 mods, and then after that, um, you go full um, all out on alacrity, which should be around 350 uh, rating. I mean um, that's my personal opinion about it, and that's what actually works the best for me as a merc healer. It helps oh, you like your resources and uh, generally healing output in you know as a whole. I find that that the zero crit or the like the very low crit rating is something that is across the board. What um, like the collective opinion is for crit rating for all healers because there the, the sore key, there's one sore healing meta that is you run zero crit you run absolutely no crit and that's how you gear your sword. Um, I don't gear my sword that way. I have like basically 30% crit, I have 284 crit rating. And it's because for my play style, the way that I play, I want that extra crit. Um, but it's interesting yeah. that you, it's with the Merc 2 that people, why do you think that is? Like why is crit hated on so much for healing? 
um, after 2.0, like crit got really nerfed, and then the minister in return, like people think think it's not worth it. But I think having one item with full critical rating, I think it's going to improve your resources and like uh, help you like keep them on a manageable level as far as nightmare item content goes. Um, I think it's is a must to have at least uh, more than a hundred rating uh, just for this course to keep your resource on a manageable level and um, like get some RNG criticals, uh, you know, in the raid. Um, as far as socks go, like you said, um, it kind of depends again, like what people, like most teams, um, feel going for. Uh, you said like you're going for thirty percent create, which is. Uh, completely uh you know uh respectable like there's nothing wrong about it but then again it kind of depends on the you know how the healing team cooperates uh during a boss counter for uh, for example my uh my guild master uh, she's playing a, a sock healer and she goes for zero crit um because she feels like it you know it's working out the best for us so i think there's definitely different play styles you can go for um I, I, at the end of the day, kind of, it depends on what you feel more comfortable with. I think it depends too with like what you play with because when I I feel like I have to restat now. I'm switching from playing with because we always have double sork healed for all of our progression. We have double sork healed, so one of our sorks, Tig's sork, is has far less crit than me, and he stacks way more power, and he's like an innervate revive bubble healer. Whereas I am, I was like the dark confusion. Bomb and big mm. heals. I was pretending that I was a merc is basically what it was. And so I stacked merc crit because I needed the crit. But playing with an op now, that's not the case. I have to I innervate way more because I don't have time to get off the big heals. Yeah. Because that's operatives are so quick. Um it's the big difference I find when I play between my Sork and my operative is when you're healing and like your responsiveness about your heals is the big difference. Like with an operative, it's so reactionary. Like you're maintaining your hots, and that's like your baseline. But everything you do is after damage is coming in. Whereas on my sork, it's everything that I'm doing is before the damage is taking place. Yeah, I mean uh, you have quite long casts. Uh, even with like uh, going for full alacrity, your cast would be like still uh, above two point two point one seconds, I guess. Mm -hmm. So like yeah, you definitely have to precast as an op uh, as a sork. If you're running uh, a like a two socks combo uh, for mm -hmm. you know hard mode and nightmare progression, you're definitely gonna have to do that. Do you think? I don't know. I always feel like I really like healing with a merc. Um, I think that merc and sork is really power. Like is a really good combo. But I think the sork does really well with either class. How does I've never healed merc op though before. I don't even know what that would be like. Because it's different. Um, As a healer, you feel when you heal with other classes, you feel the difference when it comes to healing. Like, I'll do a fight one week with one comp as with another healer, and then you do it with next week with a different healer, and you feel it in the fight how you have to heal it is different. Yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, I've tried healing uh, with an operative uh, during TFB nightmare progression. It can mm -hmm. be viable, but um, if th there's like the RNG where the, if there's in game lag uh, with the graphics engine, and you know the RNG of your criticals are, you know, is going to be bad. Then uh, you might have resource problems. Uh, while healing with the Sork, uh, it's definitely uh, going to bring more uh, like absorption to the raid because it's not all about just healing the raid. It's about like skipping some of the damage that comes into it uh, by absorbing the amount of damage. Um, so uh, as you said, like I personally like to my favorite combo is uh, Sork Merc heals. Uh, mm -hmm. But that's just my personal opinion. I mean, that's what we're using in the guild. I think we think um, the amount of absorption and area heals a sock brings is like the best at the moment. And um, the amount Bubbles of. Bubble's underrated. Uh, Static Barrier yeah. is the most underrated heal ever. Yeah. Uh, really? And then, I, I always thought that was kind of like mandatory. If you. I have looked. I have like a. You, for healers, like we don't, what we look at is we look at you know HPS. We also look at like effective HPS. So right. I crawl through combat logs of other sorks, and um, there's a like there's the big meta out there is that static barrier is a waste and resurgence is a rate a, a waste. A lot of people don't think that they're particular particularly helpful. I mean, I, if you 
you can do the math on what a static barrier mitigates, like the absorption of the static barrier. So you could say that's not healing. And while I will argue against that, I, healing in, in yeah. advance, taking like taking vitamins means that you're healing yourself from not getting sick. So we're just going to call it that. I mitigate well, I mean, about it, like it five. It still comes out to be you know damage mitigation either way, no matter how you look it's, at it. So my bubble is like five point six k with all of my stats. Like I always wonder I have, what the, the numbers. I have are. a. I have a calculator. I ha made a calculator. It's on Google. Like it to you. you put in how many, like you, when you get your parse, your mm -hmm. combat logging at the end of a combat fight, you put in your bonus healing, how many bubbles you cast, and the duration of the fight, and it'll break it down to the total amount that your barriers absorbed and the your um, effective HPS based on all of that. And it's our op will tell me, I can't, whenever I heal with you, I'll heal with my other guild. And we have another operative, and I do 500k more healing. But whenever I heal with you, I do less healing, and it's because simply because I'm mitigating that much damage from bubbles. Exactly. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. Like, it's quite no noticeable if you're even like if you're using parsec, uh, you can actually check it out. Like the amount of healing that um, there's between uh, Merc and Sork is huge, but uh, parsec is not counting the amount that um, absorption that the Sork did. So. Uh, you actually do mitigate uh, pretty much about the same amount of, you know, if it was healing, it would be the, almost the same amount. So many people don't understand that, and um, it's actually quite uh, quite usable. I mean, people should actually start using those uh, more often. You know, that's funny. It, you, coming from someone who's not, you know, an end game type player or, you know, a high level type player, it's always been like the suggestion, and not even just the suggestion, it's kind of a common sense thing, that if you've got a shield that you can just cast on people whenever you need it, why would you not use it? it I've been told, especially by people who I know who have, who have done endgame raiding uh, or ops or whatever you want to call it with sages and sorks and all that, that they always suggest putting it in there. You should always have a static barrier going. And when I'm doing PvP with my with my sorcerer, which is more damage based, or when I'm using my sage, which I am leveling a sage healer, I always have those shields going, always. As soon as it yeah. as soon as it, I can put it on someone, I put it on them. It's not I numbers. Think... And yeah, at the end of exactly. The day, it's not numbers when you on parsec and you pull up your raid healing scoreboard. I I'm always underneath the op. But if you were to factor in all those numbers. I would be at the same place as the op. Now, does exactly. it not have anything uh, to actually show the amount of damage you've protected like it does no. when you're in PvP? Uh, and um, no. no. And it doesn't, no, no. your bubble doesn't, like, for pro, it doesn't put it in prop for PvP. Oh, no. okay. okay. No, that'd be interesting, though. Oh, I, I don't see why it wouldn't, but, you yeah, know, that's me. Yeah. I, mean, I would I love think... to see how much prop in PvP you would bubble. That'd be awesome. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think personally, I think people just, uh, it's quite simple. People just like to see numbers and that's what they're going for. Uh, and that's um, the same, like, that's why there's not really that many good Merc healers out there because they do not understand the way um, their buffs uh, are working out from the talents. And uh, I think that's the main issue. Um, well, I mean, break it down because from there's i i always hear that there's two metas as far as more healing is concerned where it's the first one some people play it where you are very passive um and i feel like in the, like a 16 that this would be the way to play it is like you're very passive um as far as healing is concerned you like you aoe a lot obviously um but then like in those oh crap situations that's when you shine but then a lot of people just play it like in the other healing class and then yeah. But I think that's harder because you have to manage your resources way better if you play it that way. Yeah. Definitely. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, personally, I think people just do not do, like whine all over the forums and like say we need a boost to our uh, as far as numbers go, and um, because like they think we're not on the same page as operatives. But my personal opinion is that if we're not on the same page, like we're quite close and what i mean by that is that people just need to understand how the how the buffs they're working out i mean yes uh, 3% you know healing received does not sound uh, like a big number but on a 6 to like 10 minutes fight it's actually a quite um, you know a quite good amount of healing or like the 5 5% uh, 5 damage reduction when you know there's going to be a burst phase um, and there's going to be like a lot of area damage coming into the group if you know how to coordinate your buffs you can actually um, you know, benefit a lot of healing and, you know, uh, 
keep the raid, you know, the raid alive and like pull the same amount of uh, you know of healing uh, as an operative. But then again, it's not just about you. It's about um, you know you also give the chance to the you know to the core healer to like you know uh, heal more by providing that three uh, percent extra healing received uh, throughout the whole fight. If you know how to use that buff and keep it you know applied to the raid the whole time. Um, you can actually do a lot of healing, um, but people don't really understand how that actually works, and that's the main reason why they're whining all, all over the forums. They ask for something else. So, what do you think that mercs need then? I mean, because I, I think that mercs have been overlooked. Like, I think that you guys could use honestly something, I... especially in PvP. Like, I feel like in PvP, there's merc issues. I I can tell you about it, and I know that my like some people might want to kill me after they listen to what I have to, what I have to say. But as far as PVE goes, I don't think we need anything else. The only one thing that I would ask from Bioware would be like either nerf the the, the hit cost of Call to Shell from 16 hit down to eight, or even make it free like it was before 1.2, so we can easily swap it, which is also going to make a lot of difference in PVP as well. So. Uh, if we get like I've I've been reading people asking for like call to shell to be you know applied to multiple targets up to like three to four targets, I think that's just gonna make the class overpowered for PVE, and I think it's going to take like the fun out of it in a sense when it comes down to nightmare progression, because like we, for the past two years there there hasn't really been that many hard fights in you know nightmare operations apart for like uh, two or three that were really hard. Mm -hmm. um, as far as PvE, uh, PvP goes, I think it's um, it's very simple. The only reason people think that mercs do not pull the same amount of healing as operatives is because they're quite easily shut down uh, from the four ways, you know, four-way interrupting. Like interrupts, knockbacks, stuns, and LOSing. Um, I'm not, I'm obviously not a game designer or a class designer, but they have to fix that because that's the the reason we're easily shut down. I mean, once our power shield is, you know, um, I mean our energy shield runs off um, and we you know we're not um, you know uninterruptible anymore we basically have a death sentence over our heads and if people focus us down we're dead so I think the amount of time we waste waiting on like um, the spawning zone or like getting a full door is actually taking a quite significant amount of healing away from you know the total healing done at the end of the war zone um, so I think they should actually like I don't know like uh, Put in, like give us an ability that will allow us to like move while we cast because that's the issue. We, we, like m our main heals are castable and they're easily interrupted and we cannot you know heal on the move. I mean we we can use like uh, emergency scan once every like 18 seconds and like uh, power like power surge once like every two sec uh, two minutes, but that's that's just about it. There's nothing else. But do you think that that is that mercs need something or that ops need to get brought back down their ability level? Because yeah. it's I I and sometimes with PvP when I first started playing my op in PvP I had no idea what I was doing like and you literally can just surge prep yourself and run around in, exactly in your lane. and and I, you can't do that I can't do that on my sword like I have a I have a barrier and I can stand there and then you can go hit someone else until the little cast bar is done and then come back and hit me but. Exactly. That's like, also a big reason why I absolutely despise operatives in PvP. I, I mean, they're viewers. they're very overpowered. I, no yeah. one is ever going to argue with you that operatives, numbers wise in PVE, they put out crazy numbers. Yeah. And not that that's a bad thing. I I like that on my with an operative sometimes because there's a lot of that just like ambient raid healing that I don't have to do. Um, Hots are clearing, cleaning up everybody else. Like I'm getting, you know, as a sword, I'll get like the big heal off and the off clears, cleans up the last 85%. Um, but in PvP, operatives are, you have to have an operative. And like it's, they have utility, like, but that's part of the class. Like I would never want to take the utility of an operative away from an operative. But it's hard for other classes to be viable when it's so significantly just the best. Yeah. I mean, pre every single hill they have it's actually overpowered i mean someone's getting you know focused down you can like cast your you know area heal which is like one of the best one of their best is you know single target heals then cast the um what is the name of the of the hill um the one that um gives you like a, a hot 
uh, that requires a technical Cultural advantage. Cultural infusion. Cultural yeah, infusion. that one. I mean, mm -hmm. that's overpowered as well. And the fact that they can heal on the move is why they're so overpowered. And my personal opinion would be, I mean, the only thing mercs need is like an ability that will provide them to cast on the move. I don't think we need a new healing ability that will heal more targets or anything like that. Uh, so, yeah, like... No, no, sorry. Um, yeah, like <laughs> operatives, yeah, uh, operatives need to get nerfed a little bit. I don't know how, how much or, you know, to its ability, but the, I think we don't need a boost. I think just operatives need a nerf. Well, it I needs think to be like funny. a debuff that you get for search proving yourself over like three times in a row. Yeah. Yeah, uh, you know, like a degrading amount of heal each time it's yeah. on you already. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And not, even on just on yourself, like, I'll give you, like, I should be able to search for my tank as much as I want, but like, on yourself, there has to be something because that's where the issue is. It's just you can't ever get them down. Yeah. I mean, evasion, ban is, uh, like, decreasing the time on evasion. I mean, it, 13 it's just, seconds is what you can get yeah, it down to. It's just way too much. It's way too much hmm. compared to what other classes have. Like, Socks can use their, um, you know, bubble thingy, uh, but then again, that's not really, like, going to help them as much because once, it's, you know, it's done, uh, you're pretty much dead, um, you know, a few seconds afterwards. It's pretty much the same with mercs. Once we use our energy shield and it runs off, uh, if we don't have anything else up, like uh, cold overload or like um, like uh, a med pack or something, we're dead. That's it. So, yeah. What's your favorite fight to heal in PvE? Like, what has been the, your favorite? Progression-wise or just like every week? Uh, obviously, I think it's just progression-wise. I mean, at the moment, at least now, um, Fortress and Palaces, it's all right, but it becomes kind of boring. I mean, at least for me, I'm already like almost best in slot. I only miss the main hand, and yeah. we've been, like, we we've we even cleared the whole like both of the raids on in alts in like less than three hours. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just ridiculous. Uh, hard, I think they should re be releasing all three difficulties at the same time. Um, I yeah, solo so healed I... storm mode the other day with six people. We did like a six person raid with both yeah. places. And I so I like told them that they could not bring another healer. I was like, I'm not doing this on storm mode if you have another healer coming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would be I so bored. <laughs> yeah. I think, was it you and me that uh, like I don't remember that we killed the first boss on in Fortress on the PTS seven with like yeah. se seven. I thought it was less, like six. No, I, I don't remember. It's been people. it's been quite quite some time now. Yeah, it's seven people. Yeah. It just I mean, it's hard mode. Um, some of the fights in that I actually really like the the Dreadmasters fight in the end of Palace. Like I like. There's a lot of dispelling, which is interesting. Um, yeah, there's a lot of dispelling in the two operations. There's, you know, in Nefra, there's that that mass thing that has to get dispelled. Uh, there's a bunch of bleeds that go out all the time. And then the yeah. death mark is another mechanic that they brought back from the dreadful the entity or whatever. Yeah. yeah. And they want to do that. But those pictures, they have the worst icons in this game. It's so hard. We were, like, sitting there during progression, like, what is that icon? Because there's, like, a skull, and there, there's, like, a Frankenstein, and there's, like, a mummy, and there's, like, one more, and... Apparently yeah. it's a corpse. I thought it was a voodoo doll for like forever, and I kept calling it a <laughs> yeah. voodoo doll. And no one else like could find it because it's like a really weird colored icon. And so I was that was like my one that I had to cleanse all the time because no one else knew what I was talking about. <laughs> yeah, I think I mean both of the new raids. I think for Nightmare they can uh, if Bioware like make you know makes it right. I think there's gonna there's going to be a lot of amazing fights. I mean. The first boss requires a lot of healing, even now in hard mode. So I mean, it's a nightmare if they like push the amount of healing that needs to be done. I think it's going to be quite nice, and you're probably going to have to coordinate very good like defensive cooldowns, like sniper shield and personal cooldowns. And then I mean, pretty pretty much every single boss can be like uh, quite insane when it, when it comes down to nightmare, from what we saw from hard mode. But you just think that if that's just going to be what it's going to be, the buff across the board is just making it, like, numbers healing-wise harder. Because that's what they usually do for Nightmare. They don't, never really add 
Like I said, it's not true. They usually add healing, um, a healing mechanic to everything. At least one boss gets a new mechanic. They do add things, but I, I, like for the most part, for the most bosses, it's not really that hard to, to like deal with it. At least for the, uh, you know, for the, uh, the past operations. Mm -hmm. And then a lot of stuff was was really broken too for a really long time, with the stuff like. During progression, Brontes was broken. A lot of a lot of different fights were broken, which is hard. Because it, yeah. I mean, not that that wasn't the case last time too. Like Dreadguards was bugged <laughs> when it when it first came out, it was bugged, and you know, and though I actually wish that the hard mode Brontes was still buffed how it was, because that after the um. Like when you're going into phase three and you have the everybody has their individual tentacles, that was that was super fun to heal. It's a it's a cakewalk to heal now. I don't even have to think about it. But I love when I do progression and I have to like consciously go into fight like certain yeah. parts of the fight with like I know that I have to have like a three stacked reviv already put in there and I know that I have to have relics and you know, my goal is to solo heal. I wanna solo heal the hard mode Raptus challenge. Um, Raptus, which boss is it, like, by number? It's four like in Palace. So it's the four. one where everybody Oh, yeah, yeah, the Raptus, yeah, yeah. The, mm. but, yeah, the one with the challenges, yeah. Yeah, but I think I have to stack. I'm actually, I'm trying right now to figure out. I have, I, I use two on-use power relics. Um, I have the, like, a, because I like having that. I like having the ability to control when my healing is going out, like, when the my maximized healing is going out. Um, yeah, because I, I feel like effective healing is two things. Effective heals is the number of heals that actually count and isn't overhealing, and then that you are effectively putting the heal in the right place that it needs to be at that time. Because um, if tanks are taking damage and you're healing a raid member who isn't taking any damage, then that is not an effective heal. Yeah. Um, but I, I think that if I stack a crit relic and I, I like, basically auto ensure that I'm gonna get innervate crits, I might be able to do it. Um, I don't know, like crit relic, um, I don't know, cause like with the diminishing returns, like I don't know how much you benefit from it. Um, but like the, the like the best combo, like comp that works out for us is like uh, power proc relic and then uh, the reusable relic uh, mm -hmm. with power, both of them with power, uh, yeah. followed by um, adrenal with power. Mm -hmm. But yeah, like, um, I don't know how... Would, Wait, you um, use the power one, not the triage one? I use the triage one. Um, you use the straight power one, right? You use, you use the triage with the... It lowers your damage that's done. Um, yeah, 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 that, that oh, yeah. one. Okay. The uh, force tech power, yeah, that mm -hmm. one. Yeah. yeah. No, I know, because you have enough time going into that phase that you can make sure that your relic was going to proc. And then if I, if you innervate, if you dropped your revive as soon as you went in there, and then you made sure that your next innervate was at all three procs, you would automatically get your next revive for free. Yeah. Not to mention it'd be like 13k in healing from your innervate. Because that's, yeah. you're critting for 3.3k per tick, so... It's actually quite. Uh, no, the last uh, part has gone completely over my head. <laughs> <laughs> I I I over I sometimes it the it's hard for me to play my op sometimes when I've like come off progression on my sort because PVE progression sort play is so different than operative play. Um, I have to I'm I'm three seconds ahead of the fight in my head on my sort. You have to be, especially in mm -hmm. Nightmare, uh, when there's like uh, sometimes unexpected damage coming to the, well, not to the right, but specifically on the tanks. Um, let's say like a tank is not going to absorb as much damage or like, you know, um, avoid it anyways. Um, you have to be like, you have to precast, otherwise uh, you're screwed, especially if you're running with two sorks. I mean, you can yeah. use Innervate, but then again, um, Innervate is on a cooldown uh, and it's not going to cut it down every single time. I cast a lot of Dark Infusions because I honestly believe that Innervate is my best tank emergency heal. Yeah, yeah. An Innervate uh, and a bubble will get a tank through basically anything. 
yeah, we're doing the same here. Like uh, Dark Infusions, actually, uh, the, it's just the way to go. I mean, for a uh, research, nice. yeah. No, you you research your Dark Infusions. I research so many Dark Infusions, and I cast like twenty five percent more heals than most than a lot of circulars. But I have less force management issues simply because I always I very because I have more crit. I don't need my researches to give my crit to innervates. So I can use my research as a force management to cast Dark Infusions. Yep. That's my meta, at least. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're doing exactly the same. I, and I think that it's... Um, and it may just be that it's not... It's, it's just the level of play. You know what I mean? That at the higher levels of play, you have to you have to be a little bit more dynamic with your rotation... Um, than just relying on the like a definable easy rotation, you know. Yeah. Because you most healers, have to. if you're running that innervate heavy rotation, like you're mostly force positive. Like you're running that rotation because you want to make sure that you have that you always have force. Like I will go down to almost zero force, make sure, give myself a bunch of procs, tap down three or four times, and if I know that nothing's going to happen, I'll bear. I'll use my um, bubble to clear all my stacks off myself like understanding the fight is I think is a really underrated healer skill a lot of healers don't understand the fights a lot of healers don't know the fights in different perspectives when I know that things are going to happen I always know which tank is tanking which tank is about to tank like I know where my tanks are about to taunt so that I can plan for that in advance yeah that's exactly the the reason I mean most most of the mercs actually I would say, not bad, but like they do not understand the way their class is working out because they do not um, sort of, I don't know, like plan or get around the fight and understand how to use uh, their class's strengths and how to overcome its weaknesses. Um, and because I think that, I guess, that's a part of being skilled, I guess. Like, you just, uh, you just have to, I don't know, to figure it out yourself during progression. I've always thought the Merc was really well rounded for that aspect that you have you have like half of your heals are like those reactionary quick heals, but then half of your heals are the proactive ones and then the Colto missile can be used both ways. Yeah. I've always thought yeah. that if you're yeah. good that the key to being good on your Merc is understanding and having that timing on Colto missile down really well. Exactly. You need to to keep uh, your like healing increased uh, buff uh, applied to the tanks like twenty four seven and pretty much for the raid as well. When you know that there's you know in a lot of dam you know area damage coming to the raid, um, mm-hmm. but as an operative you just go ahead and you like toss hots and probes and you know it, your life is just easy. You know you just deal with it quite easily. But when you're playing a merc or a sword, you have to make a plan and you know. Um, understand when there's like a lot of damage coming you have to you know to know how to deal with it uh mm-hmm. rather than that just say oh you, you know people are taking damage i'm just gonna uh toss you know heals and not have to worry about my resources or you know anything like that yeah well i had a lot of fun talking to you today it's i you should help me with my work <laughs> <laughs> i i no i i wish that i played it better because i think that it's really like it's fun to play and i think it's fun to play in pvp too so i've also been really uh considering here recently uh actually as of several episodes ago thinking of picking up my commando healer again because i did have a lot of fun leveling that character but you should it just seemed you like should. every time i tried to use it people were like oh you should make a different healer commandos are bad no, so. no. I, I think people just look on the general, you know, like, in general, like, if you give a bad player a merc, he's going, he's not, for, at least for PvP, he's not going to do well. If you give a bad player an operative, he's probably going to do pretty much almost okay. the same job as a merc. <laughs> like, it's just the way that it is. Uh, but people need to understand how their class mechanics, you know, work out, and they need to. Um, to just improve themselves and understand when to, you know, use the five percent damage reduction, call the shell, three uh, percent healing increase, uh, you know, manage the resources by using supercharged gas and all of that. All right. 
Well, uh, let's go ahead and start wrapping things up. Uh, first off, we've got one real announcement, which if you guys have looked at the Torcast.com website, you will notice that uh, Albie left a final blog post on the site. And I say final because it is his stepping away from the website and from the Old Republic as a whole. Uh, a lot of stuff happened in his, you know, in his real world life at, that he decided was more important and, you know, for good cause. Uh, and as kind of a motto for the website as a whole, you know, family comes first, first and foremost, always. So, you know, we, we really hear the show and hopefully the rest of you wish him luck. Uh, hopefully everything works out for him and all that. Uh, but good, you know, good luck to him. We're going to, but from there, we're going to go ahead and continue on closing out the show. And of course he will be missed greatly. Very, very much. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Let's go ahead and give a call out to our commenters from the previous episode, which were Alexandrite, of course, Snave, and Lay. <laughs> and despite what anyone else may think, Snave was an awesome addition to the last episode. It was a lot of fun having him on. Uh, where are we at? Where are we at? There we go. Yeah, this whole show is kind of a cluster because of all the stuff that's going wrong. We didn't do any Taurus shoutouts this week, and I was going to use last week's, the, even though we didn't record, but Twitter has cleared them from my list, so, well, that sucks. Damn but getting Twitter. back... Yeah, Twitter. It, it's having issues, too. That's also from restarting my computer. It cleared my history on that, so, yeah. But going back into our contact information... If you'd like to get a hold of us, you can do so by going to torcast.com to read and comment. Hate and subscribe on iTunes, torcast.com slash feed if you use iTunes. Email us at torcast.com or me, road at torcast.com for any of your guild spotlights, uh, topics for the show, comments, questions, hate mail, or whatever else you want to send us. You can send all those to road at torcast.com, at torcast on the Twitter. Again, we are part of the Twoncamera family of podcasts at twoncamera.com. Check out their YouTube at youtube.com slash twoncamera ENT, which is where you will find the recorded copy of this episode. I will also be pour, uh, pulling the audio from that and tacking on our intro and outro because my recording software was being a bit of a pain in the ass. So you'll be able to find that. And, you know, I apologize for the audio, um, or for the recorded audio for this episode because it will be straight from the YouTube video. Uh, contact information for those of us on the show. First off, Cynic, where can we get a hold of you? Um, I guess uh, you can contact us on uh, reckoning.swatterhost.com. Um, you can like send us an email there on through YouTube uh, to our channel. Um, that's pretty much it. That's where you can find us. Alrighty. And May, where can we get a hold of you? Um, you can follow me at, at @maybebuzz on Twitter, and follow me at Twitch.tv/maybebuzz. Alrighty. And as for me, as always, you can get, send all of those emails for all those reasons I said above to road at toracast.com, or you can stalk me on the Twitter at that road guy. That's the right. Twitter. The Twitter. So, from me and everyone else, and of course to Albie, a final, that's it.